Um, to be honest, I agree with Harvey. We should just smash through the front gates. I mean, I mean that's probably not a good idea. So we'll go with what if we try to get one of them drunk? You know, that's an idea I can get behind Artix. I'm willing to bet that these people have never had the opportunity to try to dwarf an ale in their lifetimes. We should easily find someone willing to drink with us. If I bring one of my bottles with me, remember that we need to be careful, Duran says. We can't just go around luring people to deserted alleys to drink with us because it would look too suspicious. And if you were just ask someone in public for the password, someone will surely overhear our conversation and report us to the guards. Don't worry about it, Hardwick says. I know exactly how we can get someone to dr drink with us in private. No, we can't go as a group because um, we'd look too intimidating along with Darren walking alongside us. It, I'd say me and Barry should be enough to get the job done. What do you say, Barry? Are you ready to go hit up the local tavern? Sure, I'm game. I say, lead the way. Perfect, Hardrick says. Let's get going. The rest of you should stay here until the until we're done. I'll contact you. Th uh, we'll contact you through the transceivers as soon as we know the password. It would be hilarious if the developers did something like I just thought of. What if? instead of the way i'm thinking like we will go through a bunch of trouble because we don't have our stat device until we find all uh, you know leila's father and he will fix it for us i thought what if the game did something like we will go like two chapters uh, without a stat device and the game just like soft locks and it's like oh uh, well every choice you choose leads to death uh, you just can't go forward start the fucking chapter over again i would be so fucking pissed if they did that it would be funny from their point of view it would not be so funny from my point of view um where were we? Perfect, Hardik says. Let's get going. The rest of you should stay here until we're done. We'll contact you through the transceiver as soon as we know the password. Don't forget to call us if anything unexpected happened there and says we won't be able to tell if you're in trouble from all the way over here. Yeah, yeah, we'll call you if anything comes up, Hardrick says. I'm sure we'll be fine though. As Hardrick and I uh, head out of the forest, we both look around trying to figure out where the tavern is since there is no clear sign leading to it. Hardrick decides to ask one of the locals for direction. Hey, excuse me. Now Rick asked a man who was sitting on a bench on his, in his yard, Would you mind telling us where your village's tavern is? Uh, me and my friend could really go for a drink right now. The villager stares at Hardrick with an absent minded look on his face for a few seconds, then he gets up from his bench and walks into his house, closing the door behind him without saying a word. I guess he wasn't really the talkative sort, eh? Hardrick says. He then turns around to address another man who was busy digging up in uh, digging up his front yard with a spade in order to plant some seeds. Sir, excuse me, Hardrick says. Uh, would you happen to know where the local tavern is? The man stops from his work um, to look at Hardrick. He nods his head curtly in the direction of the tavern and goes back to his digging without paying any more attention. Well, I guess now we know which way to go. And then uh, Hardrick says, looking a bit confused by the reaction of the villagers towards us. Let's get drunk. It doesn't take us a lot of time, a long time to find the travelers after following the direction from that villager. Even though it wasn't written anywhere on the building that it was a tavern, we could see people walk out of it who were barely able to stand on their feet who smelled as strongly of alcohol, so there was no mistaking it. I mean, Hardrick is a heavy drinker. I think our character is also a very heavy drinker. At least I've made him into a very heavy drinker at least, but not as much as Hardrick. Um, we both uh, enter the tavern and once we reach uh, the encounter, Hardrick immediately asked the bartender for the strongest alcoholic beverage that they have on their menu. At first, the bartender didn't notice him because the counter wasn't really built for dwarves, so it was a little later than uh, it was a little taller than Hardrick. But once he realized who was making the what, he poured him his drink in a wooden mug. Th that's your strongest drink, Hardrick shouts after taking all of uh, drinking all of the alcohol in a single gulp. I swear, you people outside the dwarven lands have no idea how to enjoy yourself here. Let me show you what real alcohol tastes like. He then uh, takes a bottle of dwarven ale out of his backpack. He then stretches his arms up so he can put it on the counter. See this? The Hardrick says to the button, this is dwarven ale. I guarantee you, how many bottles did he bring, honestly? He always has dwarven ale on him. Like, it's like every time he has more on him. Like, holy shit, at least at this point, I think he must have drunk at least like, he must have used up at least like 20 bottles by now. How many bottles does he have? He even grabbed one and threw it at an orc one time. Um, I guarantee you that you've never tasted anything better. Come on, have a taste. I've got plenty more of these in my backpack. I'm sorry, but you're not allowed to bring your own drinks to this tavern, the, uh, the bartender says in a cold tone. When you drink your oven ale, then you can go outside. Oh yeah, Harik says as he takes his bottle back. Well, then maybe I will then. Uh, he then takes a drink from the bottle and he turns towards the other people in the tavern. Anyone else who's tired of listening to this stuck-up arsehole and his stupid rules can come join me too, Harik says. Drink uh, drinks are on me. 
They then both walk out of the tavern and stop right in front of it as Darwin takes an, uh, another drink from his bottle. You think anybody will come? I ask Harder, trust me. I've done this in many places before. It's never failed me so far. Hardrick says that he takes a bottle of rum and ale out of his backpack and hands it to me. The country may be different, but the taverns are always the same. You'll most certainly be seeing at least one guy come out to look for us in a few next few seconds. Just as soon as Hardrick stops talking, a middle-aged man that looks like a real heavy drinker walks out of the tavern and he looks all around to see if you've already left or not. The drunkard starts us, so he immediately heads in our direction. As he comes closer to us, the strong smell of alcohol from his breath uh, is becoming increasingly hard to ignore. Here we go, Hardrick tells me with a grin. So uh, the drunkard says as he stops in front of us, I heard you are willing to share the dwarven ale. Can I have a taste or tell you what? Hardrick says after he drinks from his bottle again. For you will make an exception, give you an entire bottle for free. What do you say? An entire bottle of dwarven ale, the drunkard says unable to contain his excitement. That's mighty generous of you. Well, uh, yeah, well, it's your reward for choosing us over the insufferable bartender of yours. Hardrick says that he takes out another bottle uh, of ale from his backpack and hands it to the middle-aged man. Here you go. Well, let's not drink here. I'm not in the mood for that moron to come and complain that we're drinking on his front porch. Let's find some place more quiet where we can enjoy this fine beverage. We're being disturbed by you, and I know just the place. Uh, Hard drunkard says after he takes a bottle from the uh, drink from the woman ale bottle. Follow me. You're right behind you, buddy. Hardrick says he grins at me, and then we both uh, go to follow the drunkard to a more secure location. After five minutes of walking later, the drunkard stops in front of an empty house with broken windows. As you follow me inside, we realize that this building has likely been abandoned a long time ago, since it's filled with dust and spider webs, and it doesn't even have any furniture left. Given that there are no beds or chairs we can sit on, the drunkard sits himself on the floor with his back against uh, one of the walls, and when Hardrick and I follow his example, also sat on the floor in front of in a cross legged position. This house used to be inhabited by a family of mages, Dunkard tells us. It was empty now, been this way for a while. I think it's just, just one year ago, maybe two. The mages disappeared in the middle of the night. Nobody has heard of them. When we asked the guards what happened with the uh, father and the three sons that used to live in the house, we were told to stop asking questions, so we stopped asking questions. Anyway, uh, I figured that nobody would bother us here since everyone's already stolen everything this could, that could be stolen. It's not like the house's owner are going to come back now. After all this time, cheers. Uh, honestly, knowing our luck, they could just show up. Uh, cheers, Hardrick says, as we all clink our bottles and we take a sip from them. This drink is really strong, the drunkard says. I only just started drinking, already feeling a bit drowsy. <laughs> uh, Hardrick says, I guess drinking to have ale right after another type of alcohol will have that effect on you. If you're not used to it, don't worry about it. Even if you can't finish that bottle with us, um, uh, I'll still let you keep it. I never said I couldn't finish it, Dwunkar says, as he now takes a longer sip from the bottle. Don't underestimate me, dwarf. I've been going to tavern since I was a wee lad. I won't lose to some dwarf and ale, no matter how strong it is. That's the spirit, Hardrick says, that he takes a drink as well. Seems like fun to just go around drinking, you know, in random places with random people. It's just like, it's a little bit risky, you know. Uh, but other than that, like, that would be fun. So I say, as I pretend to take a long drink from my bottle, uh, even though I'm only taking small steps in order to remain sober. What do you um, suppose happened with the old owner of this house? Do you think they got arrested or something? How often do people in this village just disappear out of the blue anyway? In the village doesn't happen all that often, but I'm not sure about the city, the drunkard says. I've been hearing lots of stories about people disappearing. People in there disappearing out of the blue, especially in the most recent years, and nobody knows what's happening. These are dark times you're living, I'll tell you that. I don't know what you came here to accomplish, but I recommend you finish your business quickly and get out of here while you can. There's nothing good waiting for you in this place. Sadly, we might not be, uh, we might, might not even make it past the city gates, uh, judging by how far, how things are going so far. How so drunkard uh, asks as he takes another drink from the bottle. Well, there was this guy who invited us here so we could trade with him, Hardrick says, but he forgot to tell us that we needed a passport to enter the city and now we can't contact him anymore for some reason. We just stuck waiting in front of the city and after we spent all the time to get here, the guard at the entrance said that we'd commence some sort of procedure so we could receive permission to enter the city, but I don't trust a word of what he says. I bet he doesn't even tell anyone that we are here and is just waiting for us to go away. What a bunch, waste, bunch, what a waste of time this whole time turned out to be, this whole trip turned out to be. No, you can't get into the city, the drunkard says. That's a real shame after you spent so much time to get here too. Was it for a little as he stares in front of him with a thoughtful look on his face? Um, yes, it would be a real shame if you couldn't get into the city just because of some dumb password, drunkard says. I don't know why they made such a stupid rule. It's not like we even have that many visitors. Why would we turn away the few people that come here just for the sake of security? I'll tell you what. Uh, tell you why they're asking for a password is because the king's lost it that's why he sees enemies everywhere even in his own city the man drinks again pauses again as he takes another long drink from the bottle 